When you mention the words turbo trainer to the uninitiated, it can conjure up all kinds of doom and gloom. Things like sweating away in the dark corner of your house, overcomplicated machinery and many, many pound signs. But that's not always the case. Fear not. Today we're going to be doing a little run through, sort of a beginner's guide if you like, to take you through the wacky and wild world of turbo trainers. Before we delve in then, what actually is a turbo trainer? Well, it's a static piece of kit that you mount your bike to so that you can ride it anywhere in one place without actually moving. There are lots of different types of trainer out there and I'm gonna help you sort of strip it back and tell you what's what and which is which. So you get to know sort of the fundamentals and the basics all about turbo trainers to help you make a more informed decision if you like. Should you wanna start shedding those kilos over the winter, take your training a little bit more seriously or well, you know, upgrade your trainer that you've already got maybe. There are two main types of trainer out there then. We have a direct drive and a wheel on. So let's start with the, the wheel on if you like because it's generally the more basic and one you're gonna start with if you're a beginner. A wheel on turbo trainer then is something that looks similar to this. There's a basic sort of A-frame design which you'll attach your bike into here via the quick release or the axle or something like that. And then the wheel sits on the roller at the back which provides the resistance. Wheel on turbos, well, they're also a little bit more affordable usually as there's less mechanics going on, they're a simpler design, uh, so therefore easier to make and maintain as well. There are two types of wheel on turbo trainers then, and they are magnetic and fluid. And we're gonna have a little look at both of them now and sort of the pros and cons. A magnetic trainer creates its resistance from a magnetic field. So when the wheel is sitting on the roller at the back, the mag unit then provides the resistance. So as you change the dial, which is on your handlebars, it then increases or decreases the polarity essentially, making things easier or harder. These are often the cheapest and simplest turbos to buy due to their construction, like I said, so they can obviously be the most sort of achievable for a first time buyer, if you like. The other type of wheel on turbo is a fluid driven one. Now this works by having a fan encased in a small sort of area of oil, if you like. As the fan spins in the oil, the resistance gets harder. There's no way of adjusting these like a magnetic turbo, but they can be a little bit more popular than those because, well, they often are a little smoother to ride and quieter as well. The downside to these wheel on turbos is, well, because the tire presses against this roller at the back, you are gonna wear through tires pretty quickly. Just the way that the force goes through them, it wears them down, unfortunately. You can get turbo training specific tires, but this can be a bit of a faff then because you either need to have a wheel that you're gonna use all the time for the turbo trainer, or you're gonna spend a lot of your time changing tires, which is no fun. So to summarize then, the wheel on turbos are great for beginners and great for if you've got a bit of a tight space as well because they fold up generally so you can sort of bring them out when needed whenever you feel like getting a good sweat on uh, over a direct drive which is what we're going to get to right now so that's the simple option we've checked out what about if you want something a little bit more reliable maybe uh, you're looking to get a bit more serious or make a thorough investment for the future and they're going to get into it for the long haul well, if that sounds like you, then something like a direct drive could be the one for you. Let's take a little look then at how a direct drive turbo trainer works and what its pros and cons are. So why called direct drive? Well, the bicycle that you use to power this thing, if you like, or make it move, you actually take the rear wheel out and attach directly, as you can see here, onto this cassette, and it directly drives the flywheel on the other side, so the trainer itself providing the resistance. As these are the newest kids on the block, they're constantly evolving as well. They've been around for a few years, but things like connectivity, so how they work with various third-party apps and devices, which is something we're gonna get onto, uh, is always changing, as are the mechanisms used. The great thing about this direct drive system, though, is that because you mount the bike directly to it, you take the wheel out, obviously you don't get any wear and tear to your rear wheel or rear tire, which is always gonna save you a few quid and a bit of a bonus. How do they actually provide the resistance then? Well, the cassette, which is on this side of the trainer, is attached to a flywheel on the other side. Now this is about seven uh, or so kilos in here. So when this thing gets going, it provides a more realistic feel. So it's difficult to get going, if you like, but once it's up to speed, it holds it much like you would on a real bike. If you do start training and start using power, well then these can handle a much higher power output and you don't have any issues of wheel slipping, which can be something that is a big issue on a wheel on type trainer, especially when you are starting to use the numbers. But wait, they've got another ace up their sleeve and that these are smart trainers. Whoa, what's a smart trainer I hear you ask? 
smart trainer is not a boffin that comes around your house and tells you exactly what to do. Although sometimes I feel that would be blooming helpful. No, it refers to the connectivity of the trainer itself. So be it via Bluetooth or AMP Plus, it's how you connect it to another device and use third party apps to help you train. Now, both kinds of unit can be smart trainers. They can be connected to third party apps, but what actually does that mean? Well, once you connect to a third party app, you can use these apps to help you train. So things like Zwift or Sufferfest can actually control the turbo trainer itself. Crazy, I know. So as you do your workout, it'll increase or decrease the resistance. Mental. So for example, if I hop on Zwift or Sufferfest, like I said, and I upload my training ride that I want to do, and it says, right, Rich, you gotta do 20 minutes at 300 watts, then off I pop, and what the actual device will do, will talk to the trainer and increase the resistance to exactly 300 watts, give or take. Now, again, the more money you spend, the more uh, reliable the units can be on those trainers. So this one here, uh, if measuring in watts will be plus or minus 1% difference in the wattage. Uh, this one here can actually have a variant of about 3%, so not quite as accurate, but you do pay for what you get there. For most people then, a 3% variable on something like the more cheaper trainer isn't really gonna make any odds to their training at all. But what is also worth saying is that these things, well, this will go up to 2,200 watts. So if you're gonna put power on your toaster or your kettle, well, you're gonna put something like that. These ones here, 1,500 watt maximum power reading on it. So again, just a little thing worth thinking about. What's all this power gonna cost you? Well, as a quick overview, a really basic wheel on turbo trainer could go from anything from about 100 quid, or if you have a little shop around secondhand, possibly even cheaper. If you're gonna go in all guns blazing, then a top of the range direct drive like this one here could set you around about a thousand pounds or about a thousand dollars. So that's it for my beginner's guide to turbo trainers. Hopefully I've managed to cover everything from cost to types to how they work to even what you could use them for. Uh, but that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. We've got more turbo training and indoor training sort of related content coming your way. So let me know in the comments what you'd like to see and maybe we could get it done for you. Thank you very much for watching everybody. Happy riding and I'll catch you next time.